So Jeremy, over a period of 20 years of experience, I'm sure you have seen so many resumes, the good, the bad, the ugly, any, any, all of it. So what tips you can give to job seekers or people who are new to Canada in terms of how should they present their cover letter, how should they present their resume, and is cover letters a necessity these days or it all depends what the, cli what the client or employer is looking for? What tips do you have? Yeah, no, that, that's fair. Um, so I'll, I'll answer this, Meher, from two different perspectives. Uh, I'll give you the answer, the more traditional answer. So when it comes to resumes, there's simplicity is best. S simple, straightforward. In our last segment, we talked about familiarity. So on your resume, I would suggest, especially if you're coming to the country with no local experience, mm -hmm. you should have a description of the company that you worked for. So if you can put in what the revenues were and the head count, and the reason that that's important is it helps someone who's not familiar with the company that you worked for in another country, it helps them mentally uh, put into a category of what the the size of the organization was because if you work for a billion dollar company in another market it's a very different thing than if you work for a three million dollar company it's a massive massive difference so a description of the company simplicity straightforward bullet points and i would i would talk about quantifiable achievements because what you do isn't nearly as important as your ability to do whatever it is that you do. And so if you can quantify what you've done, that will help the reader of the resume um, get, get a, a bit of an understanding of what your capabilities might be and separate you from, from one to, to another candidate that's doing the same thing. So that, that's the resume, that's the traditional answer. Regarding cover letters, you're gonna, if you ask 20, here's the thing, you ask 20 different people about what should be on your resume or, or your cover letter, you're probably going to get 20 <laughs> different answers, which yes. is really, really confusing and frustrating, yes. which I'll use as a segue to my second part of the, 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 to my answer. I'll be honest, I don't really read cover letters. Mm -hmm. I don't. Some people do, so you should probably have one. But if I get a resume that has a cover letter on, I might scan it to see if there's immediate spelling mistakes. <laughs> but I'm going to flip to your, I'm going to flip to the resume and look at the companies that you worked for, what you did, and how long you were there. That's that's kind of what I'm what, what we're looking at. That's the traditional answer. So, my, my I think my biggest tip, as it pertains to resumes in your job search, is I think that you should set a long-term goal to take the resume completely out of your job search. Mm. How would you do that? Well, by building relationships, networking, and having a long time perspective in terms of managing your career. So don't be in job search mode and then get out of job search mode. Instead, think about how you manage your career and the relationships that you should be investing in over a long period of time and when it comes time to make a job change, if you've got relationships with people that can hire you, that know you in a favorable way, you might not even need a resume at all. Yeah. That is, I think, probably the place that you want to shoot for. It can be difficult to get there. It takes a long time perspective. I've heard about that tip. It's all about relationship, networking, especially here in Vancouver. It's a very small community. It's all about networking, who you know, how, and when the time it comes. But I also know that, as you mentioned, that a lot of time people are saying, customize your resume, put those uh, uh, words so that the ATS system can pick you. How, how, how important is that to those similar words to use in the resume so that the ATS system can pick the uh, the application it, it is it, it, it certainly um, will help in your resume being retrieved from a database search mm -hmm. so why are those keywords important because somebody in the recruitment field is typing keywords in to pull resumes back that meet their search criteria and so if you don't have those words on your resume your resume just, it may not come back in the search results at all. Mm -hmm. So 
there, there, is, there is importance in terms of keywords, but again, my advice wouldn't to be go down, to go down that road and try and play and make sure that everything is optimized. Yeah. Focus on the network long term, um, and there will be a lot of you know, better value in that for, for an individual, I think, from a career management perspective. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's all about networking. Of course, you have to customize your resume, but building those relationships are important. And do you think that it's okay for the candidate to send a LinkedIn message to the recruiter or the hiring manager to the company they applied saying that, hey, I'm very interested for this role, I applied, looking forward to hear from is do you think it's okay these days to reach out to them it is a mistake not to okay to put it simply when you are looking for a role when you're looking when you're job searching you in effect are selling you're selling yourself you're selling and marketing yourself and your capabilities and your expertise and if if an individual isn't willing to do that then they're missing an opportunity to do so. Imagine, imagine me as a business professional trying to sell the services of my company and not reaching out to somebody. Mm. Do you think I'm going to be more successful reaching out to somebody and, and, and to grow my business or just hoping that someone finds something that I, that I put out there? It's a matter of both, right? You've got to do It's not one or the other. It's both. So I absolutely, and whether or not someone replies to you in a favorable way, um, I mean, obviously there, there's some limits in terms of your professionalism and how you go about doing yeah. it. And don't, don't be pestering, but be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and reach out to somebody. You will get better results. Yeah. I totally agree with you and thank you for that tip, uh, Jeremy. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of resume and cover letters, please leave it in the comment section and tune in next time for another question with Jeremy.